I probably, I don't know if I sent you uh, this is a video that I, I found online with regards to uh, what, what is a lever system. And in the articles that I had the uh, pleasure of writing with uh, Richard Martinez, where like Richard was like, it's like a trebuchet. Now, there I'm Googling trebuchet. I and we really got into it. And, and so you can read the articles and learn about the lever system. Um, but, and there are three different classes of lever systems, right? I don't know how familiar, how nerdy, but it, it, you ha have a semblance of knowledge with regards to the lever system. There's a teeter-totter. <laughs> That's where you always have a lever arm, a beam. <laughs> you have a fulcrum. You have force to resistance, like a teeter-totter, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so the fulcrum is in the middle. Now, if you have a wheelbarrow, the fulcrum becomes the wheel of the wheelbarrow. The load is in the middle, and you lift it up. So now it's a second-class lever. So the fulcrum is moved to the end, and the force is at this end, and the load is in the middle. A Third class lever is like shooting a hockey puck, mm -hmm. where you have fulcrum at one end, force in the middle, and the load or the resistance is the puck. Mm -hmm. And so you have a different lever system, the third class lever system. That's just cool stuff to know, you know, because most people just talk about, and that's why I was mentioning the article, that they, they'll just talk about where the fulcrum is, but they don't necessarily understand. It's important to perhaps know where it is, but what is a fulcrum? So the, the fulcrum is an axis of rotation. Right. Feels like Space Odyssey. Isn't there something in Space Odyssey where the thing just keeps spinning? Sure. Right. Watch the last year again. OK. Is it the monolith that's spinning? So I can't remember because it's been so long. It's <clears throat> bone. <clears throat> there you go. Perfect. And then cuts into the, the spaceship, you know. And and uh, an object set into motion and unless acted upon will stay in motion. Right. And and so we're we're looking we're looking to figure out where the fulcrum is and to understand that we we want to feel that stick rocking around that fulcrum. Which was, as I mentioned, Freddy Gruber. When he came over to the house, he's like, well, the traditional grip is is like the, the match. And he's right in a lot of ways. And he goes, and you say you're just going to go. And he, he like starts to fall over. <laughs> because it's right. It, it would do that. So see. And similarly, this thing just wants to go around and around and around. And that's kind of the feeling. Word. The whole thing feels very circular to me, therefore. <clears throat> Same with the motion, you see. This thing could go, oh, yeah. Right, and then you cock your wrist and, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so this, this is, uh, and Richard Wilson would talk about the throw as being you're uh, making half of half a circle and then creating a vector. So you're creating a half of a circle and then you're creating a vector. I said, what's the vector? He looks like shooting a bow and arrow. You create a vector and you let that, so you circular motion and then you create a vector, right? That kind of thing. So that's the concept. Because I know you, so you were saying you've studied with someone who had you playing with the fulcrum up front. Right. Okay, so so this technique in, involves all these different aspects, but is very holistic ultimately. You pull out page thirty-four of uh, stick control. We're just going to take a look at. Uh, Oh, 34 of stick control. So not the Spivak stuff. Well, not both. Spivak is marked in my book. 
if there's feedback, 80 to 84 on page five in the pencil. All right, hold on a second. Let me see if I can find it. Do I have stick control? Uh oh, I can't say. Gotta have it. That's the that's the the holy grail of all things drum literature. And then Dick Wilson had me at seventy two to eighty, and they would argue, apparently, uh, or disagree with regards to tempos. You know, Dick would think that certain tempos that Murray wanted were were a fantasy. I think he said. Um, but we're, we're we're talking about. Small parameters, you know. Oh, no, I never 80, 80 to 84, 80 to 84, 72 to 80. There's a there's a distinction depending on what you're playing. All right, we're getting a we're getting a look at the the old library. Now I got America's NARD drum solos on your recommendation. It's still uh, uh, in pristine condition, yeah. shall we say? See to ending that. And now, so there's that. Now the uh, now here come the um the antiques from the 80s. Advanced rock and roll drumming by Roy Burns. I used to have that. I have that book somewhere. And you know I studied. And you know I studied with Roy, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think you mentioned it. Intermediate snare drum studies by Mitchell Peters. Which I don't know. Did you uh, did you tell me to get this one? I don't recognize this one. I'm not sure where this came from. I, I probably did. OK. And then I have. Charlie Wilcox, the all American drummer, 150 uh, rudimental solos, another one from the 80s. It would have us get that. Um, the most important is stick control. I don't well, it's, close. it's the most important book to have. I uh, stick control. Let me see. Uh, it's something so typical. Maybe elementary. Another Roy Burns. Oh, you ever, you ever know um, Dave Desenzo? Have you heard of Dave Desenzo? No. Pull that up for me. Let's give Dave a plug. So I've you should check that. this guy out. Yeah, I think I have seen that cover somewhere. Um, this guy, and we're kind of going going off the script here, but this guy was my older brother. Was friends with all these guys from high school, including Dave Desenzo and three other guys who ended up forming a band called Two Ton Shoe. <laughs> and Two Ton Shoe. Had a, had a few years of glory. They had they had a huge hit in Korea, uh, but they never quite stuck. They were they were kind of like um, Boston, I would say. That's cool. Only more funky, more funky. But check out if you want to hear some nice '90s funk rock, and this drummer is. Incredible. What's his name? It's Dave Desenso. He um he's a son. His father ran a drum shop in Boston. Desenso's drum shop. How do you spell Desenso? Uh, D i c e n s o. And um, let's see. He's a. I think he's like a. He's a session guy. Imagine how lucky it is. Sorry. He's probably like 54, maybe. Yeah. Well, that's kind of cool. He grew up in a family with you. Duran Duran, Steve Morris, Johnny A. Let's see. He's an educator. Anyway. Yeah. He's he does amazing things. And this book, at one point I, I thought, oh, maybe I can learn parts of this book and I just didn't have it in me to stick with it because this is a hard book. <laughs> yeah, I'll check that out. Thanks for giving me to that. But I have you, know, what you have you got it you, as as soon as possible. There you pick up stick. There you that's, a, that's always a good one. <laughs> it, it's not a good sign, though, that none of your teachers had you pick up stick control. You know, that's the one. I can see this cover. All my friends had stick control. 
it it looks like it looks like this. Yeah. Yeah. I never had that one. All my friends had it. Okay. Well then <laughs> get that a, as soon as possible. Okay. Yep. So I'll, I'll find another way to think about this. Let's see. <clears throat> we were working on we were working on see how can I do this? Could I do that be similar? We're working on I had you playing the flamagetal, right? Mm -hmm. Why don't you pull that out? Page nine of the Spivak Library. Okay. Sit control is in the mail. Uh, I know it is. I believe it. <laughs> no um, well enough to know that. Sorry, which one are we doing? Uh, flam a diddle? In the flam a diddle, flam a diddle, flam a diddle, flam a diddle. Okay, so metronome at 40. Just plays eight notes. So what we're looking for right now. What we're looking for right now is to, to embed this understanding, this feeling of, of the motions involved in playing this particular technique, right? Mm -hmm. This technique is about making music using motions, which is unlike any other formal technique I know of. It's a different approach. So you learn these motions, and as Murray said to Louis in that video that you've seen, you see, it makes the whole thing much easier. You do this, and you're going up. Now, if you add this, then you go up, and you see, it's just, this will turn into this, and this, and he, he lays it out for us via teaching Louis. Uh, so we're going to have a flam, right? We, first, we just want to analyze this. Different. First, we want to analyze uh, what it is we're playing. Before you go off and play, you just want so. What what is a flam? <laughs> right? What is a flam? Dick would say one hand high, one hand low, which is true. But for us, with this technique, one hand high is is about making a motion. I feel I feel as though there I feel as though there is that circular thing. Dick would go all the way up like this. I have it on I had it on video him demonstrating this, but I think it's been erased. Don't ask. Right? Yeah, yeah just do this. See? What happens is we're talking about fulcrums, right? Everybody talks about the fulcrum in the hand, whether they really know what a fulcrum is or not. It can and it can take a minute. Nobody talks about the fact that the wrist is a fulcrum. And how about the fact that the bead, in a sense, acts as a fulcrum? That's the Richard Martinezism, the fixed point in the universe. Dick would say you leave the bead down when you go up, and if you come all the way up, you can see the the stick is moving circularly around the bead which unto itself could be considered a fulcrum. Okay, so we're gonna go up around this fulcrum that exists in the bead, represented by the bead, and we're coming up and then we cock our wrist. Now we're gonna cock our wrist, and again, the, the, if we really stay, keep everything aligned, the, the thing will go 
circularly as well. Okay? So go ahead and do that. Just make give me a downstroke. Just do just do it for me in the right. Just the downstroke. Now now go up and go up in slow motion. Go all the way up like Dick Wilson. No, not like that. That but it looks good, dude. Oh, see, you lost your fixed point. Come back down. Come back down. See how the arm unravels like that? Now go all the way up so that the butt end is pointing up to the ceiling. Keep going. Yeah, dude. Look all that power. Now let the whole up. Yeah, it can come down like that, where it could also come down. Dick, Dick would say, you create torque. No, you have to turn to the ceiling. First get up. No. This is cool. First, you have to get all the way up to the ceiling. Three finger grip. The fulcrum's in here somewhere. Okay. Now watch. Oh, there's so much power here. There it is. But, but you don't need to create, give it any English. It's the mistake that everybody makes. No, it's not this. It, it's not that. It, all you do is you get to here, and now you're just going to come down. Everything is down like that. Don't lift up anymore. Keep the bead right there. Stop at the top. There, yeah, but you have to cock more. Like that. That's different. Like that. Okay, really good. Now, now, do that in the left, just to teach the other side of your body. First, get all the way up. Now, all you have to do is cock your wrist. Everything will fall on its own. You have, all you have to think of is cocking your wrist, holding onto that grip. See, it really keeps you in palm down. Almost cock more, cock more. Now, it is true. If you come up all that way, and you don't do anything, if you didn't do anything, you'd get that. No, now watch. How much control do you have? What if, what if I asked you to do nothing but let everything collapse? You don't get to cock your wrist. All you, have to, all you get to do is hold on. Yeah, it doesn't go up very much. It's very gentle, really. But you still get, without doing anything, you still get a, you still get a whip. By, and you don't even have to try. Even less, even less. More gentle, watch. This just goes Yeah, more like that. Okay. So, okay, so there's that idea. Now, what, what would happen if, if you took that bone in Space Odyssey, out in space, you took the bone and you threw it at a, and you threw it in a straight way, it, in a, keeping an alignment of some sort, and you tossed it or threw it at a drum, right? What would happen? I think Dick would talk about the difference of playing on Earth or on the moon or on Jupiter. Stick would be really heavy on Jupiter. On the moon, it'd be different. Up would be a lot easier on the moon than it would be on Jupiter. Right? That was Dick's thinking. So if you took this stick, you, you, you threw it, turned, tossed it, I don't care how you get it there, but once it hit, I think it would re rebound and start to be a bone in space odyssey sure so the surface has force as well right so a lever system has force based on the wrist applying force to a fulcrum right uh however what about the force that exists in the surface? So that if, if, we, if we were to come up and to come down and, and didn't control that rebound, that that stick, and you had a fulcrum, what would the stick do? Right? That's the fulcrum potential where if you realize, oh, this thing wants to somehow move in a particular way. Okay, so your downstroke looks pretty good. Now we're just gonna play a flam. We're playing a right flam, which means the right hand is the predominant note, and the left hand just makes a tap. OK. 
okay, so a, a flam is one hand high, the other hand low. So you're making a little tap in the left, let's say Pajitura, to get the flam paradiddle started in its first iteration. So we have a, a right, start at the floor, and then we have right, no metronome, you don't need a metronome, we're just sorting this out. So I do too. You want to run off. I'm like, I'm busy really thinking. I'm going through it more slowly than you are. Because it's like, oh, yeah. I'm like, I'm still a kid with a toy, you know? Like, what is this? What's really happening? Not just willy nilly. Oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah. I really want to feel this stuff. Things go a lot faster if you take the time. So we have that right. Um, I feel that whole circular thing going on. Then a left. Then a right. Then a left, and that next left is going to be the upstroke for the downstroke that is a, a left flam. Okay, so now let's see. I want you to play it more slowly. 40 is not slow enough. Yeah, 40 will work. <coughs> Go ahead, metronome on at 40. Now we're not really using, the, we're not using the fulcrum in the hand, are we? Because there are no rebounds. However, there's got to be ful fulcrum potential. You have to know where that stick would start to rotate around that pivot point. You have to know that. No, play it as eighth notes, half the speed. Uh, feel every motion. Bottom of the beat on the upstroke, don't rush the upstroke. So how am I playing this? Let's see. I'm just dropping that stick for this exercise. My upstroke is about dropping it from drop it. That's where you say, what do, what do we have you saying? Uh, down as you're going up. Down. Down. Don't go yanking your arm up. That's not bad. The, the, the note is in, in sync with the motion. And I'll just, just fortify what you just felt. The idea of uh, the idea of pulling up the bead as you go up, which you, which is what I stopped you from doing and you fixed it. The idea of and suddenly you're kind of here. That, that's a big deal for this technique. I had you come all the way up here and the bead didn't move. So certainly you can come to here, not up to it's like that. This is this is the stuff. Okay? That was good. Um, okay, so now play the next iteration. Like this tempo? Same tempo. Let's see if anything changes because the organization of where notes land is different. Make the up part of the motion. Remember how that beat stays low, even if you went all the way up. You don't have to rush the down, just set a vector. It's half, half a circle, and then you set a vector. A little more palm down on the left if you can. I understand why you might not want to do that. But you don't need to rely on, on the tip of the first finger. The 
first finger and thumb do come in and there is some pressure from each side coming from one side the thumb the other side the first finger but we don't need to get under the stick in a, in a, in a way that you can't you can't feel even though you have your injury up try not to bring the, the bead up to the ceiling so you've lost that little bit of yes it's a little bit of a different feeling no you raise to the ceiling first i just want that now you're going to drop it drop try not to bring it up at all drop left wants to turn to the ceiling just a little no don't turn to the ceiling for your left coming up right now now up you lifted it up a little go deeper go deeper come on no oh, you lifted it up see if you can get one don't lift you're not doing it in the right down down say down say down down down, it's the third note. Two, three, whoa. Down, down, no. Down here, there you go, there you go. You see, it, 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 it really, we, we don't, we can play upstrokes and, and, and we don't have to play from parallel, but it's, it's a really important part of the technique. And, and that feeling, it's what, Murray has Louis Belson do in the video, and for darn good reason. He doesn't have him go like this and then go up. He he says, now make a tap mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from here. He goes, and yeah, now you're just gonna follow it up. See, because if you really, this is the feeling you want to experience. It's, it's so subtle. It's easy to, to go unnoticed. But, but see, it'll go up, watch. It's this. It's already going up. Look. That's the feeling. See, it, 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 it's going to do the Freddy Krueger thing. It's going to, it wants to fall. That's the feeling I want you to have. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let's take a quick look at the singles exercise now. I'm going to have you continue. Oh, right on the 25, that guy there. Before we do that, let's try, let's try something else. It's just nice and slow. Really lock these feelings. These, the, the pull out flam accent. Uh, pull out flam accent number two. Flam. <clears throat> so we'll introduce another stroke. Now you're playing that cool exercise that in, involved triplets that we haven't got to yet. But now we're in 6-8, so we're kind of in triplet land. Okay. What is that? Da, 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 you see what? Da, 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 And Marie would call it a, Marie would call that a touch lump, which you've learned. Okay, you got, I want you to, got the idea though, right? So you're starting to use motions without even like ever, I don't think we've ever looked at this. Stroke. Okay, so, but once again, I need to break it down. You already got it. I need to work on this. Let's see. If I really want to get sick, I have to correct myself. Like I'm up here kind of, it's like, no, I want to get, I want to get down to the floor and then play a, a proper flat. One, so here at this speed, certainly, that we, we don't have 
we don't have an upstroke, do we? You're not. No, you're. Uh, yeah, backwards. You've got to play with it. Look at what's written. So it's a right flam and then a right. Go slow, slow it down. Sometimes it's easier to play it fast. Can you really understand this thing? And it's in its true form. Yeah, you see, it just it's a throw. The, the left hand goes up with that idea that you're not going to pull the beat up. Even when you went all the way up to here, you didn't pull the beat up. No, there's no upstroke. You're, you're creating another cool stroke. It's probably yeah. another stroke. I don't want to think about it. I want you to play what's written. Ta-tlum. It's a ta-tlum. 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 Or we'd call that a ta-tlum. Typically, perhaps, as it speeds up, you'd rebound into that. So the left makes the throw. Then the right makes the throw. And, and what is each hand doing while, while the other hand is throwing? It's playing two little taps. Now, do, do you have fulcrum potential when you make those little taps? See, I feel as though the stick still wants, potentially wants to go round and round. Every time I land with those little taps, I feel it right in that three finger grip. Keep going, keep going. One more second. Pretty good. You don't, there's no need. And you're only doing it once in a while. There's no need to make the note that is the appoggiatura bigger. That 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 is an interesting thing that that people do because they really want to hear that wham. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. It's just this. Mm -hmm. So we get. Palm down. Okay, put the metronome on it. Let's see. Okay. Blah, da, blah, da, blah. 40. Got a quarter note. Palm down, get set up and palm down. You need that floor. Oops. That's good. I got to turn it down. Put it up to 48. Let's see what it looks like at 48. Don't, don't, turn into, into, and flam don't turn it into your own. I, well, fine, we'll name a stroke after you, but first play this one. Hmm? You see, that's all that's happening. I wonder which place uh, 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 here, I'll just show you this. Sure. Slow it back down. That was good. Slow it down, back down to, to uh, I can't remember. It, it may have been the flam accent. Number one, that Murray's teaching Louis. 
but here's the here's now here's the concept that Louis, whether it's the same stroke, is they all, everything works this way um, in this technique. In fact, turn turn the metronome off. Apparently, Gladstone recommended often not practicing with a metronome. Interestingly, with Dick, it's pretty religious, but there there's some benefit to just figuring out what's going on here. So you see now, pull out flam accent number one. So you can look at it. Oh, there it is, right across the page 11. Okay. <laughs> don't play it yet, don't jump, don't do it. Don't jump. Hold on one sec. Wait for me. Sure. Okay. So we have this very simple construct, which is the flam accent number two. Ironically, there are less notes in the flam accent number two than the flam accent number one. You'd think they'd be titled conversely, but they're not. Okay, so, but, so here's what we have. Murray's setting it up. Look, page, page, I don't know why he puts it. Fascinating, but you see that page, right? Page ten has flam accent number two. Page eleven has flam accent number one because there's a, a natural course or evolution to this technique. So we have this thing. We have a a a a a a a. Now, see, Murray. At some point, doesn't Murray say now? Let's see. The hand that's making the two taps is going to make it up. Okay, now you just have to add that, and you've already got it. The two fit together. Now you just add the up, up, and it's just, it's intimately connected, isn't it? Hold on now. Wait, 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 wait. You gotta slow it down. Okay, go back to just playing climax under two. Just because you should be able to go back and forth. If you really uh, and remember Louis Louis messed up. Louis goes, no, no, you've got to come up. No, you leave the beat down. There's Louis like a kid. Teaching us all how to be a st proper student. See, you, see how nice and low you are? Now just keep doing it, it's beautiful. Keep, now keep focusing on the two taps. No, don't change the stroke. Turn it into something else. See, now you can't go to the other one because you've changed it, right? That's why it's important to play with rhythm. Now just, just concentrate on the hand, the hand that's playing the two taps. It, it'll go back and forth. Now the left's playing two taps. You can go even a little slower. Just nice and E da da. Da, da. Now the ha little the hand that's making little taps, it's going to make that upstroke for the other stroke. If I'm accident number one, and now add the upstroke. Ah, uh, but don't change anything. Up, up. You tap, tap, tap. Up your butt. There it is. Come on, you got it. Tap, tap, up, tap, tap, up, tap, tap. Now go back to the, go back to flam accent number two. To flam accent number two. See? Tap, 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 tap. And without, with maintaining that beautiful flow, all you do is you add one note. Keep doing it and I'll kill you. And you add that note. You need to concentrate on the two taps because that's the hand that's going to make the little upstroke. Up. Now add the upstroke. See, it's right there. You're, you're right down close to the surface. It's waiting for you. Up. When you're ready, up. 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 It makes the tap now. That's it. Up. Up. Triple let, triple let, triple. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Four, five, six. We're in six. Up. Now come on, play the next other stroke. 
There it is. Yeah, just adding that one little note. You write down at the surface, it's built in. We could go to we could go to every, we could go through all the strokes, and I just keep having adding a note here or there. Mm -hmm. See how nice and easy that is. That's really good. Metronome on at forty. There. Very genius. Well, it's true. All right. Um, what uh, you want to do? Two start, and one, or yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start with the, the 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 one that sets up the flat flam accent number two sets up the flam accent number one. So now you've got the metronome. So now there's another thing to think about, but nothing. Uh -huh. Get your head around it. See why playing slow is important, and just turning on the metronome messed you up. Now add the other note and play the next stroke. Make it an up. Up. Got to make it an up. 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 You lost your motion. I know it's slow, but I want you to make an up. You can make an up. Make it an up. Right there. Up. Up. You're not getting it. You lost it. Up. 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 There it is. See, half the effort. Come on. You don't need to raise to the ceiling. To make it an up. See, it just becomes one note. Up. Set the bead in, into the surface, move around that fixed point in the universe, like the pole vaulter. Get it up. Make that motion there. There you go. Just drop it down. Just drop it down and go on up as you drop it. There you go. There you go. Back to the other stroke. Back to the other stroke. Up. It's big if we want it. We don't have to, but we have this motion. See, now we have the potential for a bigger accent too. And we don't lose the motion. See? So give me a bigger accent. It says flam accent, but you notice there are no accents indicated? So there's some question as to exactly what's required or what's being requested. Make a bigger motion up. You went all the way up here before, which is like a Wilson style up. Up, up, make it an up. Wedge that bead into the surface as you go up. Come on, wedge it in. Yeah, come on. There you go. Make it a little smaller now. There it is. All right, all right, all right. Okay, I just want you to work on this from 40 to 48. Just get these motions locked yes. in. It's very, very good. Thank now, you. while we're busy making motions, let's go on to uh, let's stick with Murray. You know, the David Garibaldi said, I know a good thing when I hear it or see it. It was David that sent me over to Murray. Okay, so you're going to get pull out the upstroke downstroke uh, exercise, right? <clears throat> you see, it's more of the same. Okay, let, let, let's just take let's, let's let's think about that. You know, I say something like that. I should be, and that's very Murray Spivak gistic, where it's like if I tell a student, you know, someone tells me to jump off a roof, I want to know why. <laughs> So I have to prove everything I ask a student to do, you know. I have to be able to justify what I'm requesting. So you see, well, now we've got, ah, uh, ah, uh, there's your up. Ah, uh, 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 ah. Uh. Now, now, so 
we have to go play this can turn into ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Now it turns into a flat accent number two. Or number one. Number one. Yeah, yeah, now just do this. It's cool. I'm here proving out this approach to playing. Make it an honest to good up, though. I need that to be an up, not a fake air sots up. You really want it as you tap, you go up. Up. Say up when you go up. Or down. However you want to, you can say down or up. 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 Upstroke. Up. Up. Now turn that into a flat max in number two. There it is. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Still right here. Uh, 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 uh. That's what we're that's what we're going for. So I'm going to have you do that as well. Let's just put the metronome at 48 because you started to rip there. So you're going to go from the Murray Spivak up and down triplet exercise in 6-8 into the flam accent number two. Is that really changing much? No, no, no. It's the one in 6-8. Here it is. The metronome is done a quarter. Okay, now turn that into the flam accent number two. Up, up, and go back. Okay, put the metronome up to uh, put the metronome up to sixty. Play that as uh, just as the Murray's uh, six eight exercise, Oops, page seven. Uh -uh. You have to remember when you were way up high, all you had to do was cock your wrists. And everything would come down, and it will here too. Up is as important as the down. I'm down in the left. Good. Put it up. Put it to 92. your floor on the left okay so here's where it broke down it broke down but and i know you could muscle it out but that's what dick would say you're just muscling it out mm -hmm. we, we want to get this stuff so you're definitely slash 92 
because what you don't want to do is the triplets, the first, the triplets themselves, which are perhaps easier, right? You can't, you can't lose the floor. You can't start and, and start doing this. Watch, watch. Because if you stop here, then then you're no, you're you're too far from the surface. So you got all those sexy little notes that should always be available because we're always at the floor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so eighty slash ninety two. Right, but very good. So you're getting the concept. Yeah. How, let's take a look at. Uh, let me try to get everything. Well, the plan did. Here, here's an example. This, this is, this is, it's not a one-to-one, -one, so it's, it's, it, it, it doesn't quite make sense. But so let's just take a look now at the exercise I gave you, where I had you going back and forth, playing the 16th to, into groups of three. So metronome, I don't know, 52. You're all warmed up now. where the accent is on the third note of the triplet. So this is cool. It'll keep moving around. Let's see if you can keep track. You, you really want to be able to do is keep your feet going. Right? Dick would say, feet, you turn your turn your ankles, bite the floor with the soles of your feet. In perfect prime with the metronome. One, two, three, four. Five, one, ata, ata, up, one, two, and kind of turn around. Is this going to get too? Is this going to get a little too hairy? Let's see. Let me, I'll, give it a, I'll give it a try in practice. Let, let, me, let me just see how we, I, I want to know if this is appropriate right now in terms of the modernness of metronome relative to what we're playing. So if it's going. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, one, two, three, four, five, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, yeah, now it's the second iteration. Play through once. Just show me that you can do it. Oh, well, let me see. 
<laughs> just keep your the time and it'll all become clear to you. Three, four, five, one, two. No, no, no. This is cool. This is cool. going right into the second yeah. iteration. Yeah. yeah, you're going one, two, three, four, five, ah, ah. Okay. Da, 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 da. Let's see. One, two, three, five, one. Okay, it's cool though, isn't it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That'll give you speed to what to what what speed you can get this up to? I don't I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Turn your metronome on. get this up pretty quick it's really keeping track of where you are so that you're not faking it is the goal right and this is really going to help your time so the band will really appreciate because you feel this helping everything good very good yeah it's coming along too you started to burn on that flam what is it the uh flam accent number one it's like woo off you took so you can see this, this offers all kinds of potential with regards to speed. If you can just get these motions, everything comes along without a lot of effort. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Very welcome, Patrick. It's always a pleasure. See you in two weeks.